Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Elton for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Pope Francis recited the Regina Celli prayer at midday this past Sunday with tens of thousands of people in St. Peter's Square. Pope Francis said that the day's gospel reading portraying Jesus as the Good Shepherd says the sheep hear Jesus' voice and follow him. He compared this to the time we are in our mother's womb, and we learn to recognize her voice and that of our dad. He said that from the tone of a voice, we can perceive love or contempt, affection or coldness. He said that if we learn to distinguish the voice of Jesus, he will guide us on the path of life. He asked the young people in the crowd to listen carefully for Jesus' voice and to ask for help in discerning his call, his plan for their lives, and then have the courage to follow him. More news now from the Vatican. Earlier in the day, before the Regina Celli, Pope Francis performed his first ordination since becoming Pope in March. The ordinations are traditionally part of the Pope's celebration of the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Rome Reports was in St. Peter's Basilica for the ordination mass. In a moving ceremony, Pope Francis ordained a group of priests. He prayed and hugged them in St. Peter's Basilica. In fact, the traditional ceremony was the first for Pope Francis as pontiff. During his homily, Pope Francis spoke from the heart to the ten new priests. He called on them to reflect on their ministry, adding that it won't be just about their personal concerns now, but of those of Jesus Christ. Consapevoli di essere stati scelti fra gli uomini e costituiti in loro favore per attendere alle cose di Dio, esercitate in letizia e carità sincera l'opera sacerdotale di Cristo, unicamente intenti a piacere a Dio e non a voi stessi. Siete pastori, non funzionari. Siete mediatori. Non intermediari. The Pope also talked about how the sacraments will play a key role in their vocation. Con il battesimo aggregherete nuovi fedeli al popolo di Dio. Con il sacramento della penitenza rimetterete i peccati nel nome di Cristo e della Chiesa. E oggi vi chiedo in nome di Cristo e della Chiesa, per favore, non vi stancate di essere misericordiosi. Con l'olio santo darete sollievo agli infermi e anche agli anziani. Non avete vergogna di avere tenerezza con gli anziani. The newly ordained priests are between the ages of 26 and 44. They're from four countries. Two are from India, one from Croatia, another from Argentina, and four are from Italy. And they receive their formation in Roman seminaries. Thousands of family members and friends attended the ceremony. The Basilica also had a good number of bishops and parishioners who made their way to Rome to take part in a pilgrimage. But this time around, they also welcomed the new priests. Looking now at news from around the world, the process to beatify and eventually canonize the late Archbishop Oscar Romero of San Salvador has been unblocked. Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, the president of the Pontifical Council for the Family and the official promoter of Archbishop Romero's cause, made the announcement in an April 20th homily at the Mass in Malfetta, Italy. He passed on the news to those gathered just a few hours after meeting with the Pope. The Archbishop was celebrating a 20th anniversary Mass of the death of the diocese Bishop Antonio Bello. He said he hoped Archbishop Romero and Bishop Bello, known for his care of the poor and his commitment to peace, could be beatified together. Bishop Bello died in 1993. The Vatican approved the opening of his sainthood cause in 2007. Archbishop Romero's sainthood cause was opened in 1993. And finally in the news, in a briefing produced and conducted for about 100 soldiers of a unit of the Army Reserves based in Pennsylvania, a soldier allegedly with the unit's Equal Opportunity Division included an informational slide that listed Catholicism, Evangelical Christianity, and other religious groups under the heading of religious extremism. 
U.S. Army spokesman George Wright told Catholic News Service that after receiving a single complaint following the presentation, this person deleted the slide and it was never again shown. But the fact that these groups were ever put on a list that included the Ku Klux Klan and Islamophobia has drawn strong criticism from the Catholic Archdiocese for the Military Services and other religious, religious entities. And the Military Archdiocese is calling on the Department of Defense to review the slides and to ensure that taxpayer funds are never again used to present blatantly anti-religious material to soldiers. Ron Cruz, a retired colonel who is executive director of the Chaplain Alliance for Religious Liberty, said that the Alliance is calling on Army leadership to make sure this never happens again and that all the units receive a formal apology and receive correct training. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.